Hello again, everyone. Deflect here, Firm But Fair Gaming. This is going to be a video on the Brewmaster Monk, a guide video for beginners and kind of what I do so far and how it's going. Um, I do like Brewmaster Monk. Uh, it's probably one of my favorite tanks. I have been playing Mistweaver, but it's only written Raid, so tanking a lot outside of Raid. Uh, this is going to go through the gear. I'm going to go through the talents that I use and the options of talents, and then I'm going to go through um just some basic rotation and fundamentals of the brewmaster so buckle up it's going to be a bit because there's a lot to talk about as you can see their one problem is they have more buttons than anyone else in the game a ton of buttons to hit but we'll go through the majority of them in real quick when you use them now getting into the gear we're going to start with gear first uh, I do have the four piece, so I waited to get the four piece until this week. Um, I didn't get any drops, so I had to craft it all uh, and then get it at uh, whatever the hero trinket is for 2k for finishing uh, heroic boss. Uh, that's what I waited for. So I was 499 last week before reset. Was able to do some tens, and the reason I was able to do that is because I picked up the rage heart first. Great trinket, highly recommend this. This is a must-have trinket, Brewmaster. It's phenomenal, huge defensive, pretty decent offensive, just a good trinket to have. I'm also running the stone scale because I was uh, a lot lower item level and getting hit pretty hard in four to five weeks. This isn't necessary, and I will eventually switch this out um, unless I'm pushing like crazy end where I am still getting trucked a lot, but I will switch it out. And the other one is a raid trinket. Um... The Manic Grieve Torch. So it's an offensive trinket, does big damage, um, but I'll switch that out if I'm not uh, worried about dying in a key. So that will be the other trinket I pick up. I also crafted a ring, crit verse. Uh, I haven't had great rings drop. My other one's a haste verse, and you don't really want a lot of haste as a brewmaster. I'm running 2,500, which is about 1,500 too much as is. So I can still switch a lot of haste out, but. Uh, that's a problem that I will work towards fixing. Uh, the other thing I'm going to create is the slimy boots, uh, slimy expulsion boots for uh, the feet. It basically just drops your haste and then has a chance to deal damage around 35,000. And you can double that with a toxified armor, or toxified armor patch, which is really great. Does uh, really good offensive boots for the brewmaster and haste is your worst stat so it really doesn't affect you anyway it's a great great one to have that's going to be my next thing i'm making uh and that will be hopefully soon and then i'll have to pick a piece of gear to put the toxified armor patch on uh otherwise it's prioritize item level and then basically crit verse then mastery and haste again as last that's uh, the way you build out the Brewmaster. Uh, I have the weapon. I just picked it up, but I ran out of Flight Stones, so I've been able to upgrade it. Same with this. Is I ran out of Flight Stones and haven't been able to upgrade it. <laughs> oh, I do have to farm Flight Stones, but they are at a premium as I have two uh, characters I'm playing. This and a Priest, and it's hard to get enough done on both of them to have them fully maxed out already. Getting into the talents. Um, this There's some variation in the talents. And you can pick and choose what you like. There's a lot that you kind of want for sure. Like this is a basic setup. You can choose in weapons of order. Uh, if you want weapons of order for two minute more damage, cool down. And then the two defensives over here. So depending on what I'm doing, I will take damp and harm. Because it's a great damage reduction, which is 20% to 50% for 10 seconds. And the other one is Diffuse Magic. If I'm doing a dungeon with a lot of magic damage, Diffuse Magic is great because it's a 60% damage reduction on magic. So those are the two I have. I haven't built in here, but depending on the content and what I'm doing, I'll switch them in and out. Uh, you will be running the Breath, and the reason you'll be running Breath is because our tier set is built around Breath. Breath of Fire deals 40% bonus damage to Shadow Flame and causes you to heal for 50% of the fire damage dealt. Your attacks against targets afflicted by Breath have a chance to deal 15% extra damage to Shadow Flame, and each Celestial Brew grants a Stagger Absorb for 100% of Shadow Flame damage you have dealt, causing damage delayed by Stagger to instead be prevented. 
But uh, a lot of words to just tell you that, you know, you'll get damage reduction and you will get more damage. Boom. Done. Summed it up pretty quick. That's why I run the uh, the breath. We used to run the kick, but that's why I run the breath because our tier set's built around breath. So you might as well get more breath. Uh, other than that, uh, this is pretty basic. Some people bo run Bob and Weave. I think Black Ox Brew is a necessity. Um, it just resets your brews, so you can have more brews and Celestial Brew. And Celestial Brew is king because that's your big meaty shield. Uh, the others are gain 15% mastery based on your current stagger level. I use Black Air Kick damage increased by 20%, strikes two additional targets. And like I said, you can swap in weapons of order when you prefer. Um, that's pretty much the talent tree. Like I said, you can swap this one when needed dampen harm and swap this one for diffuse magic. So that's two swaps on the left tree and then one swap on the right tree when you want weapons of order. Just depending on the time. Now to try and keep this short, I'm going to go over the basics and not go through all your utility, uh, for you. I will give you just the bare necessities. And that is to know you have an interrupt, use your interrupt a lot. Um, that goes for everyone who runs any class. Don't be the guy who doesn't interrupt. Doesn't matter if you're DPS or not, use your interrupt. <laughs> um, lag sweep is a great one, knocks down enemies. It's a one minute cooldown, very good interrupt. And that's an AOE stun. Next one is ring of peace. Ring of peace, you can throw at enemies that are in a distance and knock them, getting them to stop their cast. I am a panda, so I have Quaking Palm, which is another single target in cap, which is phenomenal interrupt, and it really, really makes a difference. Uh, the only thing I would think would be better, um, because we do kind of lack interrupts, we only have a one minute CD for an AoE and Ring of Peace, is also kind of an AoE one, only if they're stacked and it's 45 seconds. But other than Quaking Palm, if you were torn, that would be a great interrupt too. So that'd be another one on a two-minute CD. Uh, you have Para, which is an in-cap. Great for this week when it's in corporeal, um, or however you pronounce that. But it is great for this week because it's an instant cast, and it's on a 30-second cooldown. Very good button. Uh, your defensives. So we'll go through the defensives before we go through the offensives. Uh, oh, sorry, and I forgot uh, Tiger's Loss. Tiger's Loss is basically the monk equivalent of freedom. Uh, it gives you a speed boost and removes all roots and snares. Very good button. Don't forget about Tiger's Loss. So, defensively, Purify Brew. Clears 50% of your damage dealt with Stagger. Increases the Absorb of your next Celestial Brew. Instantly heals you for 25% of the damage cleared. Very good button. Next, your big heal button. Huge heal. This is going to be the... Bread and butter of your healing. This is Expel Harm. This will stack. You will see orbs on the ground. It will use all the orbs and heal you. So you will see this gain stacks. And the more stacks you have, obviously, the more healing it does. It does tremendous amounts of healing. Don't sleep on Expel Harm. <laughs> um, Celestial Brew, you can see, is big healing. And then Protective Flames uh, is great healing. And all the rest just kind of fall into... The rest there. Yulong's Grace does run it for that key. And so on and so on go down. But, so, your big ones. You Purify Brew, get your stacks. You can have a max of 10 stacks to use on your next Celestial Brew, which will grant you a huge meaty shield. Use before damage comes in. Don't use after damage. Big key there. If you know you're going to take a big hit, pop Celestial Brew. You don't need to fill it up all the way to use it effectively. And you can reset it with Black Ox Brew. Um, uh, last ones you have are Fortify Brutes, your long cooldown. It turns your skin to stone for 15 seconds, increases your max health and by 20%, and reduces damage you take by 20%. Fun little things you can do with this is you can actually use this to get a bigger touch of death. If you have, if you're not going to really need it for the defensive part, you can do that. It's, it's a fun way to get a little more damage out. Uh, Diffuse Magic, like I said, you can talent into this, reduce the damage you take by 60% from magic. Uh, Zen Meditation. Reduce all damage taken by 60% for 8 seconds. Being hit by a melee attack or taking another action will cancel this effect. So you cannot move. There was a talent where you can pick, where you can move and do this, but for the most part, if you don't have that talent, you can't move. This is the talent. I don't have it. <laughs> so just so I can show you that, you have to stand still, 
if you take a melee hit, it will cancel this effect. So you kind of want to be out of melee range on a big hit. You best use basically, I think, on a boss because it is a long cooldown, but it is five minutes, so you theoretically could use it during trash and a boss, but you can decide when to use that best for you. Dampen harm. When you take this, reduce all damage taken by 20% to 50% for 10 seconds, larger attack being reduced by more. So really good on big hits. Really good. If you're going into a dungeon, you're going into a boss fight with big hits, take Dampen Harm. Very, very good. Now, offensively. Um, we talked a lot about... Oh, sorry. In the utility, you can do some fun things with Transcendence. I forgot to use, tell you about that. But offensively, you will have White Tiger Statue. Does a little bit of pulsing damage. Throw it in the middle of the pack. It's... It is what it is for that. Rushing Jade Wind, you want to keep up. Thumbs a Swirl Tornado around you, causing physical damage um, for 8 seconds. It's kind of a button they're getting rid of, so know it for now. You'll forget about it next X pack. Uh, blackout Kick, your big, big damage button, because you'll be hitting this all the time. It's not going to be your top damage, but you will be hitting this a lot. Uh, Rising Sun Kick, you will also be hitting a lot. Uh, breath is, again, Breath works with their tier set, so you'll be using Breath. Hag Smash uh, makes your Breath come back off CD. So, if this just goes on CD, it's on CD for 15 seconds, you Hag Smash refreshes Breath. So, very good thing to do. No, use Breath before Hag Smash. Very simple. <laughs> Spinning Crane Kick, still a good button to hit. Um, but your first two will be Blackout and Rising Sun now. Uh, that's my weapon, so the weapon does damage. And then Bone Dust Brew. Try to, because you're going to have two Bone Dust Brews for every exploding keg. So if you do this correctly, they both say one minute cooldown, but you reduce the cooldown of Bone Dust, so you get it every 30 seconds. So you can Bone Dust and try and use it, and then Exploding Keg is what you want to do to maximize the DPS you can get out of it. Um. But it is uh, still a good button to hit. So you'll hit it once and then exploding keg. And then the next time you'll hit it at the 30 second mark and you'll hit it again. So I will show you how the purifying brews work. So if you're hitting a target, you have to take damage. Problem is there's another tank here. So you can't use a purify before you get it. And I have mine set up to show the stacks. And you can see when I'm taking damage, I can build stacks with Purifying Brew. Now, I'm not going to take enough to get hit here, so this is... I can't show you how much Expel Harm heals, because I just can't take enough damage. Uh, because you want to keep stacks up. But you can see this is gaining stacks. I'm gaining stacks of Expel Harm, and I took damage, and if you use Expel Harm, you heal back up. Now, the Purified Brew in the Celestial part. Purified Brew, I have four stacks now, and you can see if I hit that... I will get a shield equivalent to the how much it is. This is the UI I have and how it works. Um, your UI might not do this, but um, you want a UI that will tell you your stacks. And you can reset Celestial Brew with a Lockout Brew. And again, you can see how much I'm going to get for a shield. You hit it and I get just a little over for the shield. But it's, it's because of the other stuff that's built into it um, with the tier set. But use Celestial Brew before big hits because it puts that big shield on you. And that's how you basically get rid of Stagger, get rid of Stacks. You can see Stagger's up. Um, once that comes back, I'll be able to get rid of a lot of the Stagger. Because it purifies the Stagger and builds you that into your shield. That's just how it works. So, what you want to do, basically just continuously build stacks. You don't want to use these quite on CD, but you want to space them out so you always have one available. And then you want to use Celestial Brew before you're going to get hit a lot. Or, you know, when you're uh, once you've pulled everything together and at the beginning of a pull and you're getting trucked, uh, that's when you want to pop Celestial Brew. Because that will last a while. Then you can reset it. And if I like to do that. And then you reset it because you'll still be taking a lot of damage because the mobs haven't died. And you'll still be building stacks to purify. You should have a big chunky expel harm. So you can let your health go down a bit. And then use the expel harm. Purify back up a few stacks. And use celestial again. The rotation. As this video is getting quite long. I'm trying to get through this. Uh, I knew it would. Because there's a lot to talk about with Brewmaster. But. 
rotationally for Brewmaster. This is not a full rotation guide, so don't harp on me saying you can minimax it a little better. Of course you can. By all means, you can do it. You just got to remember, you got to work these buttons in while using defensives as a Brewmaster. So, theoretically, you have a good start. You want to go in with Rushing Jade win, and then when you're at a distance, you want to hit them with a uh, with a Keg Smash. It's because it's a distant attack, you're all your rest or melee, you want to hit them with a Keg Smash. I like to Black Out Kick, then Breath, because Breath is your big one. If you have Weapons Order, you can pop it. Keg Smash, Black Out Kick, Rising Sun Kick, and then you'll have to refresh your Rushing Jade win. At this point, <laughs> you can... Uh, you could spin and crane kick if you wanted, but again, you go back into breath and you could, and then blackout kick again. Now, this is comes where you use, now that should group everything. You should have aggro. It should be great. You should be chunking around now with aggro and everything. Now, once you have the aggro part, this is where you can get a little more, um, expansion on your buttons because basically your big ones are the blackout kick rising sun quick but then you can tiger statue or i've done it at the beginning of the pool it's not the worst uh if you tiger statue at the beginning knowing where you're going to pull them to because it pulses damage um but you won't want to bone dust brew you can exploding keg back into i would should have breath before i did both the keg smashes but uh breath keg smash keg smash and then you go back into the blackout kick, rising sun kick. And when you have some downtime, wheel in a spinning crane. Spinning crane is kind of like your lowest priority because it chunks through a lot of um, a, a lot of your energy. So it's kind of lower on the priority, even though unless you're like huge, huge targets. Like if you're doing a massive pull, I would probably move it up a little bit. But it's blackout kick and rising sun basically on cooldown. And then you want to keep the breath up. And like I said, when you breathe, keg will reset breath so you can breathe. And remember that works well with the tier set because the flame damage does give you shields and stuff. And heals you. So, very, very good. It might not give you shield, but heals. Anyway, that's kind of the gist of it. Uh, remember to wheel in your purifying brews and your expel harms when you're taking damage. But it, it doesn't... It can get a little more difficult than that, but it doesn't have to be. Uh, you can min-max it a lot better, but I can show you kind of fuller, <laughs> a little quicker speed, how this looks. So I'm going to do one more at full speed here for the um, for the rotation. But again, my damage meters aren't working. My healing meters are working. So I tried doing just a healing ramp, and it works fine. But my damage meters aren't working, so... Uh, you know, do what you will. You, you'll see some crappy damage because, again, it just isn't working. So, uh, you kind of go in. Black air, breath, rising sun. I come in then with black air, reset everything. And now you start throwing down all your big buttons. Your brew, your exploding keg, my weapon. Back out to black out. Reset with keg smash. Keeping renewing mist up. Spinning Crane is a filler, and then resetting the Fire Breath to Blackout Kick. So it's, it's hard to say all at once because it goes pretty quick, but yeah, you're just kind of looking to keep everything off cooldown, and Spinning Crane will be your filler uh, in that speed. But again, it it's not showing in the damage meters, it's showing junk, so like you... It's showing 400 damage, 200, so it's it's not working, but it will look like that on a pack. Uh, your dragon's breath and everything kicks in. And that's the weapon because the weapon I cranked on and it just, it does a lot of damage for, you know, 10 seconds. So doing a not long pull, you'll see it right at the top. But that's how it is played. If you have any questions, as always, leave a comment below. Like, share, subscribe, deflect, firm but fair gaming. We'll see you in the next video.